In this edition of Weekly Wrap, we look at the Euro, the Looney, and check out what's been going on with crypto with Matty Greenspan from eToro joining us to give his expert analysis. Matty, thank you very much for joining us today. So let's start with the Euro. The ECB kept interest rates unchanged yesterday. However, no real uh, decision was given as to when they'll begin to unwind stimulus. What do you expect to see from the ECB going forward? And overall, what are your thoughts on the single currency? Thanks a lot, Jack. I think that the markets made themselves very clear yesterday. Uh, during and following Draghi's speech, the euro shot up past 1.20 to the US dollar. So it's right now at its highest level since 2014. Um, and that 120 was actually a very significant psychological barrier. Um, basically what Draghi said is that decisions are coming soon. He promised us a lot for the upcoming meeting in October. Um, they've discussed the euro volatility. They're aware of the situation. Uh, they discussed uh, whether they want to do more of, a, more of a gradual scale back or a sudden scale back. Uh, those things are all being discussed behind closed doors. I think the meeting minutes coming out uh, from this meeting will be particularly interesting. And then the October meeting, we should finally hear uh, a much greater indication from the ECB about when they're going to be scaling back. Uh, more than that, I think that there's been a tectonic shift in the last few months, which most people aren't aware of. Uh, the US dollar is traditionally the safest currency around, um, but I think that people are more looking at, since the US dollar has been sliding lately, I think that people are looking at the euro more as a safe haven than they used to. So let's, let's hop over to Canada. The loony dollar has been going from strength to strength recently. What do you expect to see next? Can, can this strengthening continue? Uh, it certainly can, yeah. Um, it, historically speaking, the Canadian dollar is usually just, about, just a bit weaker than the US dollar. I mean, I, I remember growing up, it's always been around one to one, maybe a bit of a discount in Canada. Um, I was recently in uh, Canada and it felt the feeling there was that everything that you buy was at a 20% discount. So the Canadian dollar had just about an equal purchasing power to the US dollar, but you were buying it for 20% cheaper. Um, the, on Wednesday, the Bank of Canada gave a surprise rate, uh, rate hike, which is, in, it, which is incredibly, incredibly significant at this point. Uh, central banks usually try to do forward guidance. They let us know when they're going to increase rates. Um, and just the fact that they surprised the market and didn't give any indication that they're going to hike uh, is probably it, it could indicate a shift in strategy that they're looking for a a stronger Canadian dollar. And by the chart, uh, right now we're at about 120, 121 on the Canadian dollar. Uh, like I mentioned, historically, one to one is is the average of the day or the norm of the day. Okay, finally, we can't have an interview with Matty Greenspan without talking about crypto. What have been the big moves of the week and what should we be looking out for, Matty? Yeah, so uh, the week started, uh, well, the last weekend there was an incredible surge. Uh, just about all of the cryptocurrencies reached a new, new all-time high. Bitcoin went briefly above $5,000 $5, per coin. Uh, the entire crypto market was, was, was simply booming. Uh, then sometime around the middle of the weekend things started to pull back, which kind of seemed normal. Uh, and then on Monday morning, there was an incredible announcement from the, the People's Bank of China who basically said that they're not going to allow uh, any new ICOs for the time being. So ICOs are basically the way that new cryptocurrencies are introduced. Um, it's kind of a, um, I, wouldn't, I, I would say that it's, it's, it's kind of a shady industry, the ICO industry, because there's a lot of scams uh, that can come out of uh, these new cryptocurrencies. And the People's Bank of China was basically saying, okay, let's stop that action for now. Uh, and many actually believe that they're going to regulate them later on. So it, ICOs is kind of like an IPO in the stock market, uh, only there's a lot less regulation involved and uh, companies are making a lot of money and startups can make a lot of money uh, by producing their own cryptocurrency, which uh, alternative investors could then buy. So this news, when it broke, actually sent the crypto markets spiraling downward. Uh, but within 24 hours, there was a complete recovery of that move. So at this point, we're basically flatlining on the cryptocurrencies, and people are deciding uh, that surge that happened on Saturday. Was it justified? Should we pull back from those levels, or should we keep going? So at the moment, we're seeing modest 
uh, increases, you know, one percent or two percent on the crypto markets, um, and we'll see uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Matty, thank you so much for speaking with me today. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. So thank you very much. Thanks, Jack. Pleasure is mine. Have an awesome weekend. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview and would like to find out more, be sure to head over to dukascopy.tv.